Good morning. Welcome to church again. Another week of online uh, church. It's Sunday the 19th. How's lockdown going? We've seen a lot of changes in the last few weeks, haven't we? And in a strange way, I think life, sort of at home anyway, has got a little bit more simple. And I was thinking about how I could share this with you this morning, and I was thinking along these lines that I'm old enough to remember making phone calls on one of these, on a telephone. I'm old enough to remember when we used to take photos on a camera that looked a bit like that. I'm old enough to remember listening to music. <laughs> That's my first Walkman. I bought that in 1985. Played tapes. I've even got some tapes left. I'm old enough to remember Viewmasters when you look at pictures in one of these. And I'm also old enough to remember Donkey Kong, an early video game. That's from 1982, and I think it actually still works. I'm not a hoarder, I'm really not. But I think of these things, and I remember when I was younger, and how life seemed a bit more simple. And I do think, and I'm not trying to minimise the lockdown, I'm not trying to minimise the anxiety, and the heartache, and the worry, and the stress, and all the frustration that this is bringing into people. I, I, into people's lives. I don't want to minimise that. But I keep hearing the same things from people. The board games are coming out. The jigsaw puzzles are coming out. Families are eating meals around a table. Cars are staying in the garage. The recipe books are coming out. People are baking bread. Homes and gardens are getting tidied. Folks are going for walks and they're waving at each other. And this is all good stuff. Later on in the service, Andy's going to be talking about simplicity and about how Jesus can bring a simplicity to our lives and not to focus on materialistic things. And there's one Bible verse I want to share with you, which is our call to worship today, and it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. And it says, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands. Now that's not a Bible verse that's telling us to be boring. It's telling us just to lead a life that Jesus wants you to lead. Keep it simple and enjoy having a faith in a heavenly Father who saved us. We're going to sing a worship song now. Sing your praise. 
sing song Show peace and light And I will rise Among the saints My gaze transfixed On Jesus' face Oh, praise the name Of the Lord our God Oh, praise Him Okay, so I'm Matt and this is Sarah and we're um, service leading again this morning. I had something to share with you. I was doing my Bible readings this week and it was on Joseph. And it sort of reminded me how Joseph uh, got taken from where he was living. He got taken all the way to Egypt and he had to live another life for quite a period of time. He sort of spent time out of his comfort zone and he must have wondered where was God in all of this time when he was in Egypt. But if you know the story, you know that God still had a plan for him. And I think we can take real heart that no matter what we're going through, God has a plan for us. And I want to read you the last bit of um, my Bible readings for this week. And it was after I read about the story of Joseph. And it says this, It's hard to find God in the darker moments in life, but he is always there. We need to know that as a fact, because when the heat is on, negative feelings can fry our faith. Sadness and hurt can chew up our love for God. We may, we may not be able to thank him for our troubles, but we can always thank him in our troubles. He's our shepherd, our rock, and our helper, and he knows how to mend a broken heart. And I found that very encouraging this week, knowing that we can thank God in our troubles. So no matter what we're going through with this lockdown, we know that Jesus is there with us. And no matter what Joseph went through in Egypt, God was there with them the whole time. I'm going to do the celebrations now. So we've had a few celebrations sent in. If there's any more out there, apologies for missing them, but I hope you've had a good birthday or wedding anniversary or whatever it is. So the, uh, the celebrations that we've been made aware of are Levi Miller, Makaya Nicol and Renee Faith, who have all had birthdays, as have Ken Dodds and Stu Mitchell. And apparently those two have got O's at the end of them. So... Big birthdays there. Happy birthday. And I don't think it's a 20 or a 30. <laughs> I don't think. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if you've been watching the news, um, or you'll have seen, you'll have heard about all the hard work that's being done in hospitals at the moment, caring for people who are sick, especially those who are sick with this COVID-19 flu virus. And I thought we could pray for our medical workers today. And I have found a prayer that I'm going to read now. So uh, let us pray. For the ministry of healing. Loving Lord Jesus, in your earthly ministry you healed sick people and brought health to troubled minds. Bless we pray all who are continuing your work in clinics and hospitals here and throughout the world. Give inspiration to those who are researching new ways to combat disease. Give patience and sympathy to doctors and health visitors as they listen to patients and advise them. Give skill to the hands and minds of surgeons as they operate. Give endurance and compassion to nurses and to all who care for the sick and who follow in your steps, our healer and redeemer. Amen. Thing from being in lockdown is spending time with my whanau. We've been getting to do lots of crafts and we did Easter theme. One good thing that's come out of um, being in lockdown for us is that we've had the time to go for a walk around the block together every day. 
uh, we've spent more time with the family, and especially me, uh, being as I've always been very busy with work. One is still busy with work now, but we get to do very interesting things, you know, playing board games together that we all love and reading together and telling stories and um, also doing simple things like going for a walk to the beach together as a family. We tend to bond during this period, so that's very, very good. It's been very exciting to do that. State of watching TV and using devices, I do no crossing state. What I um, want to keep up with spending time with my family is that we don't spend as much time doing stuff away from each other. It will just basically be about scheduling. Um, so maybe on one or two particular days in the week when we don't have too many after school activities, as soon as we get back, the idea will just be to schedule everything else out, no homework, no work, just settle down, sit down and have a talk as a family, maybe play a board game or maybe just go out for a walk just to repeat those things because it seems to help in terms of communication with the family. It'll be harder to keep this going after we go back to work and all our timetables of everything starts up again but we hope to be able to do it regularly if not every day. Kia ora koutou. I'm Martin McCauley, Senior Pastor of East Tauri Church. Today, this Sunday, is day 25 of the COVID-19 lockdown. We recognise that this crisis is serious, especially for those who are vulnerable, who have lost loved ones, or lost jobs or businesses. But we also recognise that God is at work, helping us to grow as Christians and even thrive through this time. We have much to be thankful for. I've been impressed at how resilient you've all been and how you're encouraging each other, even while physically isolated. As a church, our three priorities during the lockdown have been, first, getting our worship services and programs online. Secondly, ensuring the church family are as well connected and supported as possible. And thirdly, being open to the ways that God's leading us to show Christ's compassion and care to our communities. Let me update you on progress. First, a huge thank you to all who have contributed to the amazing video for our video stream church services for lovely children's stories and creative activities, including a mainly music online. I've loved seeing familiar faces cheering us up and helping us trust God. We've had as many as 900 people view our morning service and over 400 people view Epic on Sunday evening. This is a huge achievement. Some youth and children's programs have been put online and we're working on more. There have been lots of encouraging comments and emails, so thank you for engaging. We've phoned or emailed everyone now who is not previously in a small group, a life group, to see if they want to join in one of our new care clusters. The idea is that everyone is connected by phone or internet with someone in the church so they can encourage each other in following Christ during the lockdown. Now, not everyone's felt the need of this, of course, but there are now 31 clusters ranging from 2 to 16 people each, plus our 21 small groups uh, and the various clusters at Fuel. We do want to hear if there are any pastoral needs. Please phone the church office or contact the prayer chain so that we can pray and so that we can help. Thirdly, you are showing Christ's love and compassion in our community in all kinds of ways. I met someone from church one morning when I was out on a, a run and he told me about people that he phones to keep in touch, mostly people not from church actually. We have many essential workers who have been pressing on through the lockdown, serving the community. And uh, Renee, our shift community and youth worker, runs the grocery delivery service for vulnerable people. Renee's had 60 bookings so far and is averaging four to five shops and deliveries per day. Currently, she has six active volunteers and two staff. Please call the church office if you'd like to join this team with this essential and rewarding work. Let me update you now on how people are supporting God's work through East Tauri Church financially. Automatic payments have been holding up very well. 
Obviously, cash and envelope giving has stopped. We're encouraging people who used to give this way either to change to automatic payments through their bank or to simply put your envelope somewhere safe each week until the easing of restrictions allows you to give this way again. We're also not receiving donations for the use of our facilities over this time, so our total income may be down approximately $5,600 a month due to these things I've mentioned. Further reductions in income could occur if the economic recession causes job losses among our church family. We'll monitor this closely and report to you as more information comes to hand. And please, again, do let us know if there are any needs that we can help with. We hope we'll be able to move down to Level 3 soon. But even then, we still will not be able to gather in our church building for Sunday worship and small groups will not be able to meet together. Consequently, we'll continue to prioritise providing online worship and resources and combating loneliness, especially for those who are vulnerable and isolated. Additionally, we'll seek to help you grow as resilient disciples so you can thrive during this period and not just survive and that you can show Jesus' love to others. Finally, I'm excited that God is still at work. The Holy Spirit is still leading us. And so we will discover new ways of being the church for the future and not just simply returning to the past. Can I pray with you? Gracious and loving God, we praise you and thank you for your faithfulness and for your love. You are Emmanuel, God with us, especially in difficult times. Help us all to stay close to you and to thrive as your disciples, we pray, and help us to shine brightly with your love for others. We continue to pray for your protection and care for those who are most vulnerable and for those working in essential services. We pray wisdom and humility for our government leaders here and around the globe, especially in those vulnerable countries uh, in Africa and elsewhere. We ask you, Lord, for your healing work so this virus can be eradicated. And we thank you that you've brought us through 25 days of lockdown by your grace, and we trust you for the rest of the way. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. We'll stay in touch. We're going to get, dedicate our offerings to God's work in prayer now. If you're visiting with us online today, you're welcome. Please don't feel any pressure to give. But if you'd like to donate to support the work we're doing, you can see the details on our website. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the gifts given to us this week. Lord, we just thank you for the money given to the church, that we can use this to further your kingdom, Father, that we can use it um, in the way that you want us to. Direct us how you want us to use this money, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every single
how much life has changed over the last few weeks, how things have become simpler. I know that in our house we've been doing lots of things, gardening, baking, tidying up, craft, puzzles, games, you name it, we've been doing it. And I've decided it would be really hard to do these activities without two things, without your hands. And this got me thinking about the next part of the Easter story, what came next? and it wasn't more Easter eggs and hot cross buns. Remember, Jesus rose from the grave. Pretty exciting, eh? Imagine seeing him die, and the next thing, he's alive again. Pretty cool. And he went to hang out with some of his friends, his disciples, but not all of his disciples were there. There was one that was missing, and his name was Thomas. And because Thomas didn't see him, he didn't believe that Jesus had risen. He said, until I see his hands, put my fingers through those nail holes and see this, and put my hands in his sides, I'm not going to believe. I won't believe it. And eight days later, Jesus appeared to the disciples again. And he went straight over to Thomas and he said, examine my hands. And Thomas stuck his fingers into his hands and he stuck his hands into the sides, the wounds at the sides of Jesus. And then Thomas believed. And Jesus told Thomas he believed because he'd seen. He also said that there are huge blessings for those of us who believe without seeing. Imagine, imagine the blessings in store for us. Isn't it cool to think that if we believe and trust in Jesus, our lives are going to be awesome and we don't have to worry about things. I've seen an activity on Facebook a lockdown activity which you might like to try at home. All you do is you draw around the hands of everybody in your bubble. So there's Emma, Ashley, Sarah and Matt and then stick them together. And down the bottom there I've written lockdown 2020. This will help you to remember it if you need if you need help. Mine's actually a wee bit different so this is what the Facebook one looked like 
And then I've actually added another hand to mine. Can you see that there? That's Jesus. And this helps us to remember that Jesus has got this. He's in control. If we trust in him, he's holding our hand through this. He's got it. And that is just awesome to know that we've got that extra blessing there with Jesus looking after us. We're just going to pray now for the young people as they go out to Kid Zone. Go out to Kid Zone. Flick over to your programs. Um, there's Plunge and Kid Zone available through our Facebook page. So let's just pray. Father God, we pray for the young people now, Lord. We just ask that um, you're with them, that you help them to learn, to grow more in you, and to ask questions, Lord, and to know and believe and trust in you. Bless their teachers today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible reading today is from Matthew 6, verse 19 to 25. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where th thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or whether, or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Well, good morning, church. It sure is a privilege to be able to bring God's word to us this morning. As I was sitting this week right here at my dining room table, I couldn't help but reflect with everything that's going on in the world and in our community with regards to COVID-19. I'm sitting at my dining room table writing a sermon for today in times that I never, ever, ever dreamt that I would ever have to face. I find myself hoping that this will all be over soon and that we can step into the new normal that God has in store for us in the future. I find myself wanting to go to the shops. If I'm selfish, I find myself wanting to go to Mitre 10. In particular, I never dreamt that I would run out of screws and supplies because I, I kind of have a habit of having heaps of those. But I find myself that I need to go to my to 10 for some projects that I have dreamed up over this time. I mean, I need supplies and I don't think I'm alone in needing to get out and go and, and get things that we in every other week of our lives have been able to just pop down to the shop and go and get. As I sat reflecting on this, it hit me that therein lies the exact problem that I want to speak into, that I believe God wants to speak to us today about, and that that's desire to always want more. As I sat here wanting more, even though at this particular time in my life and our lives, I cannot have any more except for what the government has deemed as essential. In fact, the past few weeks, has forced me and the large majority of us to live a simplified life, to make do with what we have and not dream up some elaborate new thing that needs, that needs every whiz, pop, thing, bang known to man or that money can buy. What the last few weeks has highlighted for me is keeping things simple has fallen on hard times in the world we live on and in today. The idea of a simple lifestyle, we love the idea of the simple lifestyle. However, we love too the option of having choices. 
Jesus, however, teaches us that freedom is not found in having everything that opens and closes, that has lights and buttons and bits and bobs. Freedom is not found in having heaps of things to do or activities to fill our life. In fact, I remember years ago, a friend of mine would always say, he who dies with the most toys wins. Life is not about filling our calendar or having all the toys that keeps us so busy. But rather, life is about keeping God and His will first and foremost in our lives. I always believe that I, you should never preach a message that you have not chewed on and battled with yourself. And I had to sit back this week and think, is having some toys, or in my case, tools, I love tools, is that such a bad thing? And when I was honest to myself about it, it depends on the heart that is behind the situation or the toy or the tools. Listen to today's scripture again, Matthew 6, verses 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourselves riches here on earth, where moths and rust destroy, and robbers break in and steal. Instead, store up riches for yourselves in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and robbers cannot break in and steal. For your heart will always be where your riches are. That last little bit, in fact, that that scripture stings a little when I read it. What I'd like us to do today is to unpack what the author intended for the time that he wrote it. And then how we come back into today and apply that into our lives. Lord Jesus, as we step into your word, as we step into unpacking what you desire us to take out of this morning's message, your message, Lord, I pray that I do not get in your way in delivering your word to your people. Holy Spirit, wherever we may be seated or standing or whatever we may be doing right here in the now, I pray that you will speak mightily and boldly into the lives, hearts of your people who are watching this. Let's have a look at verses 19. Do not store up riches for yourselves here on earth, where moths and rust destroy and robbers break in and steal. Back when this was written, we must understand that people of greatness, people with great wealth, would often have large amounts of stuff, gold, silver, and a whole lot of garments. Now, these garments weren't just your average garment. They weren't just a a collared shirt bought from the local store. These were garments made of the finest silks and materials of the day. The problem, however, with silk is that often it is eaten by moths and and if it got a little damp, it would rot. In fact, many years ago, when I was still in the skydiving business and rigging skydiving parachutes and reserve parachutes and manufacturing them, I remember back to the day where, where parachutes were made of silk. And for the very reason that silk rots, and decays is why we had to repack our reserve parachutes every six weeks. Because if you had used your reserve parachute and any organic matter, like a piece of grass, got in there and you didn't clear that out, that would start a decaying process, a rotting process within the, in the silk. If at any point it was stored in a, a damp place, we would have to repack it because it would start to rot. And let's just be honest, who wants to jump out of any aircraft with a rotting, decaying parachute? 
Now I know that many of us who are, are, are thinking about the gold and the silver are thinking that they don't rust. I know this and believe it or not, so did the author of the day know that silver and gold don't rust. The word translated here in, to, uh, for rust does not pertain or even relate to metal such as gold and silver. But rather it highlights the things that corrupts and consumes. Such as if you know corn or if, if it got mildew on it, it would start to decay. It would start to eat away at it. Or for example, varmints in granaries where, well, we don't need to go into too much expl explaining there, but it's not a good thing. The gold and silver here refers to what thieves would break in and come and steal and take away. So what does this mean for us today? If we jump across the river and into our time, here and now, Jesus in this verse, I believe, is challenging each and every one of us to live a simple life. A life filled with peace and simplicity. Where we do not fixate on worldly wealth or things and places. Jesus challenges us to put him first in our calendar. To free up some space for him. Jesus here in the scripture is challenging us to not hoard up treasures in the here and now. And he is warning us against that covetous of our worldly mindedness, that wanting, that desiring, that need to have more. Often we hoard up treasure, troves for the future. And in this moment, Jesus is stepping in and reminding us that it is of no use to him in the here and now. In the same way, in Mark 10 verses 21 challenges the man. Listen to this. Jesus took him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Now we don't know what happened to the man because the Bible just tells us in verses 22 of Mark, at this time, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Here in Mark, Jesus challenges the man in a way that would be understood that he, the man, would understand. He says to him, go and sell everything. He knows that the man is wealthy. He knows that he has much. He says, give up your treasure trove. And the man walks away saddened. So what are we to do? In verse 20, the rubber kind of hits the road. Instead, store up riches for yourselves in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and robbers cannot break in and steal. What does that even mean? What does it mean? What am I to do? Am I to sell everything like the rich man is challenged in Mark? Well, maybe. Maybe if your heart desires more money, more goods, more things then it does desire Jesus and his will for our lives? Hey, maybe. I'm not saying go off and do that. Don't do that. Jesus here is challenging us that we are to pursue riches, joys and glories of another world which infinitely excels everything that is valuable in the here and now. 
here in this world. He's challenging us to store up riches in heaven that could never be corrupted. It could never decay or corrode or rust. It could never be taken away. Jesus is simply challenging us to lift up our hands and with them, everything that we own, everything that we are, and put the whole bang shoot right into his hands. This is the very challenge that Jesus put to the man in Mark. Put your life in my hands. Trust me. Give me control. The man could not give up control for his riches were of greater value than the relationship with Jesus. Listen to Luke 12 verses 33. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. When we put our treasure trove into the hands of Jesus, it will never wear out. Jesus will never fail us. And no thief could ever come near to taking it away. No moth could ever destroy it. You see, Jesus challenges us to get rid of the rust in our lives that is creating decay, that is killing, that is stealing, that is robbing our relationship with Jesus. In the same way, Jesus challenges the rich man to sell everything because the riches are his issue in life, his God, his, well, where his heart is. That was the very rust that was coming between him and Jesus. In the same way, we are challenged by this piece of scripture to examine ourselves to be honest with ourselves, we cannot hide the truth from Jesus. He already knows the truth. We are to examine, be honest, so that we can see the rust, the decay of what is between us and Jesus. And why should we do this? For your heart will always be where your riches are. Where our heart is, our riches are. Living a life of simplicity frees us from the clutches, the decay and the rust of this world. A life of simplicity, simply believing in and trusting in Jesus sets us aside to be used mightily by Jesus in and through the power of his Holy Spirit in the here and the now. That's why I said a little earlier, having some toys, having some tools, there's no bad thing in that. There's no bad thing in having wealth or riches. But when we can let it go, when we can serve Jesus with our hands wide open, not hanging on to things and worrying about them. All of a sudden, we can serve Jesus not with, with a, an idea, but with everything. Jesus can use every area of our life. But I also believe that Jesus will take away some areas that get between him and us. If our treasure trove is put into the hands of Jesus, our hearts will also be right there with him. It'll be established in him. Our desires will not be desires of this world, but our desires will be one of a heavenly value. 
Our conversations will not be conversations of worldly good, but of kingdom value, of kingdom investment. Our affections, our love will be set on things above. Our conversations in kingdom value while we are here on earth. And it is in this space, this space of utter simplicity, of giving over to Jesus. It is in this space that Jesus has everything. It's in that space where we find happiness. You see a life deeply rooted in the will of Jesus is a life filled with simplicity, peace and purpose. In that life, we always put Jesus first in our calendar. In that life, in that space, we always seek his will. We always seek to invest in his kingdom. My challenge to us today, what rust in your life? What rust in my life as I chewed on this very topic this week is stopping us from living a life of simplicity, is stopping us from living a life that's so desires Jesus what rust is in your life maybe you watching this today maybe you joining us and you you might be thinking who is this Jesus I hope there's so much in my life that I need to put down that I don't want to carry anymore I want this life of simplicity Well, I want to speak to you just for a moment. If that is you and you've never committed your life to Jesus, I want you to join me in just saying a simple little prayer. Lord Jesus, I desire this life of simplicity. I surrender all into your hands. I step out of my old self and I clothe myself anew in you. Have your way. May your will be done in and through my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. There may be some of us, like me, who this week has been have been challenged by some areas. You may be believing in Jesus. You may be a Christian for many years. But you know that there's some parts, there's some rust and corrosion left in your life that is coming between you and a life of simplicity. I want to pray with you this morning as well. Lord Jesus, I pray for... For everyone who has rust in their lives, who has those treasure troves. Lord Jesus, as we take this moment just to sit in your presence, highlight to us, Lord Jesus, what we need to surrender to you. What are we holding on to that causes us sleepless nights? What are we hanging on to so desperately under the illusion that we're in control, that you stand at the door and knock and say, give it to me. Wherever you may be today, name that thing. If you're brave enough, name it out loud. Lord Jesus, even... You know our hearts. I pray that all those things that have just been named, be it out loud or be it in the silence of our, our own thoughts, I pray for freedom. Holy Spirit, come and step into those spaces. 
set people free from that corrosion, that rust, those treasure troves that come between you and us. And we step in to a renewed life found in you as we surrender everything in our lives to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. A life found in Jesus is a life surrounded by simplicity. A life surrounded by serving others, giving up our gifts, our talents, our finances to help those around us. Have a blessed week. Jesus loves you, and so do we. Amen.